Hi guys, so this is just one of a few videos in a series that I'm doing about the truth behind the lash liquids and adhesives that we use as lash artists, an unregulated industry, the dark side of the industry, why you shouldn't trust big brands, what UK compliance means, different changes in the FDA and the regulations on lash products, basically everything. I uncover what goes on behind the scenes in an unregulated lash industry that no one wants to talk about and how most of the products that you are using are destroying your health and have destroyed mine. So if you haven't watched my first video in this series, please go and watch it. But in a nutshell, it talks about how in 2014, two years after I started lashing, I became allergic to lash adhesive. Very, very sick, nearly ended my career. But this is what led me on a journey in 2014-15 to produce my own range of super safe lash liquids that I have had made here in the UK where our standards supersede those across the globe. Originally, unbeknowingly, I'd been buying my products from USA suppliers because we didn't really have any here in the UK back then and they were coming directly out of the Far East. So low grade ingredients, no wonder I was so sick. But again, I've covered this in other videos because if I go over it again, we'll be here all blimmin' day, okay? So um, what I want to talk about today is an intolerance versus allergic reaction because the two are very different. Now, if you're a lash artist, you will have seen this unless you are very, very new. So we're going to talk about how to spot the difference and how one can start off as an intolerance and go to a full-blown allergic reaction but we'll also finish as well with how some people like myself after nine years I'm a happy healthy lash artist despite being allergic to lash extension glue back in 2014. So what an intolerance is is it's almost like an irritation so if you've ever used a face cream or or something on your skin or something and it just caused you to come up in a bit of a rash or something just irritating okay that's an intolerance so if you ever get a client that's had lashes on and they complain suddenly of a little bit of itching or a little bit of like contact dermatitis or that they just sting a little bit more than normal that's an irritation it's just irritating to the client and this can happen after a client wearing lashes for years and years and years because this all starts through the body getting to a point where it goes, I can't cope with this anymore. Think about how we, we might have people in our lives that we don't like and up for a long time we tolerate their behaviour and then one day we just snap and say, do you know what, you are an idiot and I don't like you and I don't want to ever talk to you again. This is This is what intolerances and allergic reactions are like so your intolerance is when that person just annoys you just a little bit they get under your skin they make you a bit oh like that so that's an intolerance so that's what your client will start to say is happening with a lash adhesive or it can also be the liquid so things like primers bonders debonders post bonders lash cleansers all of these can cause this. It's not just the lash glues that most people believe. Your most potent product and your most dangerous product for lashes is your gel debonder. And I might do another video on that one, but that was quite in depth. And I'm not I'm not a product expert in glue debonders, but I know a bit about them, but not as much as I know about glues. But that's the one you've got to watch out for. Don't buy that crap from the Far East, guys, because that'll peel your skin off. Make sure that's coming from the UK. Big, big time. So anyway, an intolerance, okay, is that irritation. But what then happens if that person starts continually being exposed to what it doesn't like? Let's say if that person you don't like is constantly in your life, you're going to you're gonna snap one day and be like, you're probably going to punch them in the face, aren't you? Because they've just got under your skin so much. That's what happens when you continue to be exposed to low grade products that are not designed for beauty. And I've covered this in other videos. I can't I can't go back over it in this one because we'd be here all day. Now, what will happen is you will then go into a full-blown allergic reaction and that's where the immune system has now been affected. And what will happen is the body recognises that ingredient as an allergen. It's like an attack, okay? And then what the body does, and I'm keeping this really simple, is it produces histamine to try to defend itself from this ingredient or product that it is seeing as dangerous, okay? So this is why so many people have reactions to lashes and so many lash artists as well. It's very rare that it happens straight away because it takes time for the body to build an intolerance. It takes time for us to actually get to know somebody and think, do you know what, I don't like you, you're a right idiot. And it's the same as lash glue, I'm trying to make it really simple here. 
So yeah, clients are very rarely going to react first of all. And then you get people on forums going, well, I've had a client and she's been my client for eight years and she's never had a reaction before. So this is really strange. No, it's not strange at all. It's just the body going, I can't deal with this constant overexposure to this crap that you're putting on me every two to three weeks. Now, once that person, unfortunately, a lot of the time is allergic to a product, it tends to be game over because the body goes, I can't deal with that anymore. I, I know that I don't like that and I'm not letting that, that, that product back into me. So every time it makes contact, I'm going to fight that the best I can. But there are times like me when you can reverse it. Now, interestingly, I'm going to go backwards about here. A lot of people think it's the cyanoacrylate in lash adhesives that are allergic to. I'm going to talk about lash adhesives in not here, not the liquids. A lot of the time, it's not the case. It's the stabilizers that get added. And every single glue on the market will have a different stabilizer in it. And I'm going to talk about stabilizers in a different video. So don't be so quick to blame the cyanoacrylate. A lot of the time, like I said, it's the stabilizers, but people don't know what's in their glue. And also with cyanoacrylate, there's lots of different types of cyanoacrylate or acrylates used in lash adhesives. It's not just cyanoacrylate. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, if you're allergic to an acrylate, you're allergic to all the different types of acrylates they are. So you'll get people that sell cyanoacrylate free glues and they don't work on that person because they're still allergic to acrylates. Whole different topic that one is. Now, unfortunately, if you are severely allergic to cyanoacrylate and the only way in which you would really know would be to go and get private allergy tested for this, then it doesn't matter whether you then expose yourself to low grade cyanoacrylate or very high grade like my uh, cyanoacrylate used in my lash adhesives, which is distilled, it's purified, it's beauty grade, it's got no crap left in it. The body goes, that is still a cyanoacrylate, which I don't like. So it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, it's a bit like it doesn't matter whether it comes from the shop around the corner or whether it's completely organic. If we're talking about food here, the body will still go, I don't like chicken, I don't like nuts or whatever. This is what happens when it comes to cyanoacrylate. So this is why some clients, even if they switch to like a high grade quality adhesive that has got really pure cyanoacrylate in it, they still react. So some clients it's game over, some clients it isn't. Now you might be thinking, or you might not, why do some people get allergic and some people are fine forever? Okay, I do think that the amount of exposure that you have has a lot to do with it. So I was exposed at a very high level within the two years that I was lashing. I was really busy lashing. I was doing long days. I was exposed to it. I wasn't wearing any type of PPE because back in 2012, 13, 14, it was never recommended. So I do think I had a high level exposure to it. But they also do say that your genetic predisposition can have a lot to do with it. And I think this kind of makes sense, which basically means that some people's immune systems are more susceptible to things. So despite me being a really healthy person, I can't tolerate alcohol, so I can't drink. OK, it literally goes to my head. And after a tiny bit of wine, I literally feel like my arms are going to fall off and I want to go to bed. I can't really take drugs. So, OK, paracetamol and all of that. But any strong painkillers or anything like that, I I can't. I can't do that, so I don't take it. So I do think that my body is naturally quite sensitive to things like that because I don't really expose myself to them. So I think that, yeah, I was kind of prone to have this, but I do think somewhere along the lines, everybody, if continued exposure, will start to develop these intolerances or allergic reactions because the quality of the ingredients is so poor that they're not designed for humans and the human system just won't tolerate it forever. Now, another reason that people can have allergic reactions is immune system changes. So let's take, for example, you'll tend to get a lot of reactions in the springtime when the pollen count is high because the body is already under attack from all the allergens. You'll probably notice that as an adult, you tend to get more hay fever symptoms than you did when you were a child. It's because we've been exposed for so many years to this pollen every year that our body goes, I, I can't deal with this anymore. Uh, so springtime, we're, our immunity is low because we're <laughs> being subjected to pollen. So you'll see more allergic reactions at that time of the year or intolerances. They can be both. Also, winter time where people are constantly fighting off the cold and flu viruses. So their body immunity is already low. So we're more susceptible to uh, reactions to lash liquid products then. 
uh, women going through the menopause as well. Your hormones are all over the place, your immune system's all over the place. Um, we're very susceptible during perimenopausal or menopausal to go and have reactions to lash adhesive. And here's another big one, pregnant women. Pregnant women, you all know that your hormones are playing havoc, your immune system's all over the place. Uh, another reason why I personally won't ever choose to lash pregnant women, I have got another YouTube video on that, it's my personal choice, but I just don't think it's worth the risk, but immune systems are all over the place and a woman is very susceptible during pregnancy to have a reaction. And imagine if you're exposing her to crap. Crap out of the Far East, that doesn't even bear thinking about, I'm sorry. So there are a few reasons why we can have reactions at certain times of the year or when our immunity is lower. So is it possible to have an allergic reaction and then be able to wear lashes again? I absolutely think it is because I can do it, but I owe that to the fact that my ingredients are different. Okay, so I don't have any harmful stabilizers that I see in the Far East products in my lash adhesives and lash liquids. So I've eliminated all of those. When it comes to my lash glue, I don't have industrial grade cyanide acrylate that is used to stick planes and trains and automobiles and whatever back together as never should be used on humans. I have high grade, beauty grade, cyanoacrylate. So my body goes, I like those, that's fine, I can tolerate them, they're nice, but don't, you know, keep me away from that crap stuff that comes out of the Far East. But I also do think that your immune system can change, like your immune system, if you look after it, it can change, it can become stronger. Would I ever expose myself to Far East crap? No, I know I'd go backwards, but you can get your immune system back up and running. Um, avoidance is the best thing you need to let your body rest so if you get these clients that are like i just want to keep trying i'm going to tolerate lashes no, 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 no avoid it you need to avoid it you need to give that body a rest and just let it do its thing um and again you can just find that naturally over time the body could just you know get it all out of its system and be like you know what i'm going to tolerate this again very very rare very rare but we're not saying that it can't happen but for me personally the key is making sure that the lash ingredients that you know that you're working with across your whole liquid system not just the glues everyone focus on the glues and it isn't that it isn't that it's everything is safe that is the only way that you're going to protect you and if you're a young lash artist watching this as in young to the industry new to the industry you've got to start now like like you're the lucky ones because you're the ones that could be like i could stop this now okay unfortunately there's not many uk suppliers as in lash companies that that make out in europe and the uk because we have such few producers here and we're quite expensive to produce that's why they go to the far east but you need to try to be finding suppliers that are selling uk or eu made lash glues and liquids because you know you're going to protect your health so I hope that's kind of covered that one really on allergic reactions and intolerances. And um, if you have any questions, please ask, pop it in the comments or drop me an email. Um, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out my other videos in this series because each one is doing it on a different subject. So I can't cover the same subject in every video. So you're probably thinking, well, what's she talking about in that bit? It will be covered in another video. So please go and watch all of them to learn the real truth about what goes on. But also I do have some great blogs on my website, eyelashexcellence.com, which talks all about this in detail and will really open your eyes up to the truth that goes on in the dark side of this lash industry, unfortunately, which I had to learn the hard way. Anyway, thank you for watching and um, I hope to see you at my other videos.